Do I'll it. kick it off in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome, and everyone. God, God show where damn me. it, Jelly Knees. You are the <laughs> guest host. You will not speak until spoken to. This is Beta Mails, where we're going to be playing various beta games. Hopefully free. Not all of them are going to be free, as we'll see next episode. But uh, this time we're talking about Blood Hunt, Vampire the Masquerade, Blood Hunt, a third-person battle royale. I am your host, the Mangoose. Joining me is going on this adventure, for the most part, <laughs> is going to be the Viking Jedi, not Jellies, but the Viking Jedi. How are you doing, me. dude? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, I, I can't wait to start this off. Uh, of course, Jelly has to be Jelly and troll us on our first intro together. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, no, but I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited uh, to, you know, not only just to get an opportunity to play some more games, uh, but have a, a show that we can uh, display those games to. And it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't feel right, I guess, not having Jelly here as part of our our first inaugural um, show. So <laughs> welcome, Jelly Knees. I, I, yeah, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself to anybody who doesn't already know you, but feel free to. Is it, is it okay if I speak now, Mangus? Yes, yeah, you okay? have been spoken to, so yes, you okay. may, you okay, may now perfect. speak. Uh, I'm, no, I'm happy to be here, even though I'm not going to be with Mangus every week anymore. I'm going to cry every time, but it's fine. Uh, it should be super fun. I'm excited to talk about this game. We've been playing the crap out of it, right? So... It should be super fun. Should be a good first episode, and I'm excited to see where you guys go with it in the future. You will still be with me every week that we do for the minions. Whatever, Mangoose. <laughs> if I'm not with you on every single show of every <laughs> single thing you do, then it's unacceptable. Okay, then Full I'm not happy. Full replacement <laughs> incoming. All right, so mas masquerade, blood hunt, whatever you want to call it. So it's based on a tabletop uh, game, Vampire the Masquerade. But it's kind of loosely based because I don't think that's a really a battle royale. I don't know how you do a tabletop battle royale. But I, I usually don't like battle royales at all for whatever reason. I actually enjoy this one. This isn't the first time I've played the beta for this. This is a free beta. It is um the game is being developed by Shark Mob. It um it's AAA. They've they they when they first came out, I don't think they were identifying as a AAA studio, but they are now. Uh, they are owned by Tencent, which I do not care for Tencent. But this game is pretty good. So, just general thoughts, Viking Jedi. What do you think of Blood Hunt? Um, I, so I I love uh battle royales as a concept. Um, obviously there was a, a huge push for lots of battle royales, and and you know we've gotten I think at this point just about every iteration of a battle royale. Um, but I, I think with Blood Hunt they took a lot of the the things that we're used to in other brs and and did some interesting twists on it i think that there's there's a lot of uh mechanics that they have you know maybe borrowed but then twisted in a good way and, and i think that's that's a good approach to any kind of you know established concept but you want it to be your own version of it um and, and i think that they are stepping in that direction well uh, but uh, and overall impression so far since I've been playing it, uh, I like the game a lot. Um, there's frustrating parts, but that's of course gonna I think happen with almost any game, especially with BRs. Um, but yeah, so far so good. What about you, Jelly? How are you feeling about your experience thus far? I mean, I've really enjoyed it so far. I mean, I've got 90 out of 100 levels in the battle pass already, so oh, clearly I've been playing a little <laughs> bit of it. Um, but before the comments eat Mangus alive, it's also a long-standing video game franchise that has been RPG games. There's bunch of them four or five or six of the vampire the masquerade rpgs and they're even developing another one but this one was supposed to be coming out in tandem with originally mm. but because that was delayed indefinitely this came out first um but i've been really enjoying it i think you touch on a lot of great points viking that this brs have been such a hot trend in recent years that you see a lot of brs coming out and not doing anything different than what we've already seen Right, you see a lot of them that are copying PUBG, a lot of them trying to copy Apex, a lot of them trying to copy even Warzone mm -hmm. uh, now that it's become a staple. And I think this does a good job of feeling unique while still keeping core Battle Royale ideas in the forefront at the same time with the powers and the gunplay and melees meaning something more than just kind of a meme 90% of the time. <laughs> right. Not that's joking with that. that's what I was going to say. That seems to be the biggest difference that I've noticed is that melee weapons are something you choose to wield. And there's a variety of them, like mm -hmm. with Fortnite or whatever. Yeah, you you pickaxe somebody, but that's like last resort. Like Blood Hunt, you like you can main your melee weapon. Like mm -hmm. you can just only use the melee weapon, and you and you and as long as you get the jumble people, you'll do just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I, I agree. Melee is really, really strong. I mean, I know in a few of our games, um, you know, that was the main damage of like Jelly, for example. He would have like two, three K damage just from from melee and um and specking into it and looking at how your character interacts with melee. I mean, it's in some instances is not going too deep into this because I don't know if we're ready for it, but like I mean, it feels almost overpowered in some aspects. It's it's so strong uh if, if played well. But uh yeah, melee's cool for sure. You guys want to talk about like the unique mechanics of Blood Hunt in comparison to other battle royales? Absolutely. So I think um well it is class based, which isn't really a unique mechanic, but you have clans. Mm-hmm. Each class belongs to a specific clan. So you've got the Toriador, Nosferatu, uh Bintru, and the Bruja. And yeah. uh you go, man. Goose. Each one I would them. not have been able to do that. No, that you nailed it. I wouldn't have been able to do that. My memory's not good enough for it. I yeah, probably wouldn't have been like able to pronounce them. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so the, the Ventru is the only one that only has one class associated with it, which is right. the new class, which is the Enforcer, which is stupid, overpowered. Um, but yeah, and, and each clan has their own ability, but then each class has their own ability as well. So, ex- mm-hmm. for example, the Nosferatu. Both Nosferatu classes can go invisible and and get a short speed boost, but um, the Prowler class can throw down like a mine that um, explodes with poison gas, or or the Prowler one throws the the that's the saboteur. The Prowler throws bats that echolocate and detect enemy players, and um, right. yeah, it's just pretty cool overall. I agree. I, I mean, um, I'm going off those, I, I think, and I think each um, class also gets their own unique passive, so they they don't share passives uh, across. So, right, um, you know, so for a prowler, I believe their passive is that they can detect uh, the uh, like blood trails of enemies that that have been injured recently and stuff like that. So um, when it's not buggy, which we can go into, uh, it sometimes does bug out. So uh, beware, you prowler players, that it will not always show you. Um, and and it's got like a weird timing. Sometimes it seems like you can follow them forever and then other times it seems like they will get a heal off or something and now you can no longer see where they went uh but anyway um yeah so having each class be unique in that regard i haven't really seen um you've seen instances of it before in some brs where like your weapons can make you unique in that regard and all that stuff but this is like to me feels way more like like an rpg turned into a battle royale, which is kind of cool. So you, you're not necessarily having the progression um, with your levels that give you abilities. You start with the abilities, but the, each ability in each class feels unique to itself. Nobody, it doesn't, none of them feel like they're stepping on the toes of, of one of the others. And um, what I really like about it is despite maybe feeling some are more overpowered than others, I think in the hands of people who know the ins and outs of each class, you can make them all viable and um, they can all fit niche, whether that's solos, duos, or in trios. I think that there's value in, in having all, you know, all of them in, in play. Um, Enforcer does feel really strong though. I'm just you can go agree yeah. with you on that. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if they're think, overpowered, but they do feel really strong. Yeah. And I think the cool thing with this is the clan, the class or the clans make the characters feel connected. Sure. Right. Where in other BRs that like even, Apex Legends, for instance, you can have two characters that fit into the same like assault type class, but mm-hmm. they don't other than being aggressive. That is the only thing they share. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think having the clans having lore behind it where you're actually tying these characters together of they belong to the same clan of vampires. And as such, they both have the same Q ability, I think is a cool little touch that makes it feel more. It makes the world feel lived in a little bit for that that aspect of like camaraderie and, and being in a clan. Um, but I think it's it's a really cool idea to have slight consistency. So, you know, looking at that person, oh, they turned invisible. They're one of these two things. Let me very quickly determine which one they are otherwise. Um, I think also in Vampire the Masquerade lore, there's six clans total. Mm. So we could see an additional two clans be input into the game, oh, which I think cool. will be really cool to see what those add to the game. Similar to in the early tests that they did several months ago, the Ventru class didn't exist. So when the mm-hmm. game is released in its current state, we now have a new class to play. So I imagine we'll see that every season they come out with a new character in a, one of the classes or multiple classes or whatever. 
and um the, oh, ahead, the aesthetics too like there's different aesthetics for each clan as well mm -hmm. like nosferatu mm -hmm. is it's very much what you would think of as a vampire very like <laughs> necrotic sort of undead looking while the bruja is very like tough and beefy like even yeah. even the female bruja and then the toreador are like very um good looking the the to, very like siren esque. Yeah, they're the, they're yeah. the pretty vampires. Yeah, the ventures just look very <laughs> sort of rich and professional, sort of looking, mm -hmm. almost like businessmen or women. Yeah, you know, something like that. Yeah, and I think it's cool from like a lore aesthetic. I hate it as a player, uh, but in their store for cosmetics, they have class specific outfits. Right, you'll see things that fit that class as well, or that clan. Sorry, that that clan. That you're like, oh yeah, that more emphasizes the undead look. That more emphasizes the like military and like brute look of the Bruja. That more emphasizes the sexuality of the Toreador, right? Like that, I think is really cool. I hate it because if I want to play a Bruja, <laughs> I want to be able to look super sexy like a Toreador outfit, but it sucks. But I think that again, the aesthetic of it is super, super cool. I, and I completely agree. I do. Um, I'm always a fan of because just of my wow and rpg days of seeing like something that's unique to your you know class so you know so having class specific uh aesthetics um i prefer them to be earned i think those tend to be cooler like if you can earn like a really neat you know outfit or skin or something like that uh that represents your class um i, I just always think those things are, are cool to be able to show off right um but uh it adds prestige or something like that um and and to your guys's points i think one of the things uh it's a little bit more actually to what jelly was saying is having the classes, you know, share an ability also makes like the transition from one to the other really smooth. So, you know, if I know my Q ability is always consistent, I only have to now learn this, you know, pa this new passive and this new, uh, you know, other ability and what that looks like and feels like it, it still isn't a jarring experience. Whereas sometimes, you know, if you end up like, for example, in Apex, if you switch from one character to another, that's a whole new kit of things that you have to figure out and learn and and so i think being able to jump from one to the other isn't as jarring um it does feel a, a fairly smooth transition between them and, and i like that um especially from you know just mechanics but aesthetically it's nice too yeah. and I, I think too all the class abilities really complement whatever play style that you want to use mm -hmm. for example the one where you vanish um you can use that to reposition in a firefight if you're if you're good at aiming and um and, and, and blow somebody away where they you get them from an angle they don't expect. Or if you're like me, you use it to dash straight into their face where they don't see you <laughs> and then start hacking away with it with a melee weapon. Like it doesn't matter. Like it's the same thing with like the Bruja are kind of designed to be um, melee centric, but like you've got the push that that blocks projectiles. You can throw that out and then gun somebody down quite easily. Mm -hmm. And then the engage like the jump, you can jump in, knock somebody up and then burn them down with with a shotgun or something like that. So mm -hmm. it, it, no matter how you play, like the class abilities can help you. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I think uh, with the class abilities too, uh, the, it, it does feel like you can use them for offense and defense, which I, I think is right. really valuable. Um, it, there's, there's a lot of games I feel like where it's just almost, this is an offensive ability and I can only use it for an offensive ability. Otherwise I'm wasting it. I don't really feel like there's too many instances where that's the case. Like, um, you know, there's plenty of times where I've seen jelly use his mobility to, you know, jump up a roof way faster than almost anybody else can, because he has two movement abilities that give him that opportunity to scale, you know, large buildings way faster than your average player. And the cooldowns are slightly different too. So like, unless I'm chasing him with the same abilities, you know, my Q, for example, on, on Siren is going to only get me so far. And that Q is now on a, a significant cooldown and that's my escape tool. So now I'm going in to engage on him and I don't have a disengage tool. He has the advantage. He's already higher up. Then it, so there's like a lot of aspects to it that you have to think about. If I use this ability now, will I have it for when I need to get out or when now we want to engage. And so it's, it makes for a lot of fun. Comms get a little crazy too. Oh, I use my ability to go in. We all need to be going yeah. in. And somebody else is <laughs> queuing that way and like, okay, guys, I'm going this way now because I see a purple guy I want to eat. Uh, but no, so like there's, yeah, I, I like that it does feel, you know, offensive and defensive uh, <laughs> in play, which is cool. And I think even further than that, like it, it suits individual play styles. It suits offense versus defense, but it also suits like in BRs across the board. You have your stereotypical like 
I'm going to start super hot, go in, fight everybody from minute one. And you have the rat strats where who they they're like, I'm going outskirts. I'm finding the like scrap loot on the side of the map. And I'm going to work my way slowly and picking off whoever decides to get in my way. Yeah. Right. And I think even all of the classes benefit from either of those play styles as well. And I think that's a really cool thing to see that there's not it's not like, OK, I'm going rat strat. So I'm going to pick two Nosferatu and a muse. Right. And just right. play really safe and outside the zone. Whereas you may, you can easily pick those same classes, but drop dead center with everybody in the heat, no problem at all. Yep. Uh, something that we didn't even touch on when we were talking about how unique this BR is, and we, mm -hmm. ju we just touched on it twice now. To get buffs, you eat humans that are located <laughs> around <laughs> It's such a cool town. idea. So it, like, it really lends itself to the vampire, yeah. You have your vampire sense, and that's another thing we haven't touched on yet. Um, you know, your screen goes black and white and it's like a big spread out thing. Any players caught in that will be highlighted red, which is really mm -hmm. nice to have. And then all the humans around you will be highlighted. And if they're orange, they give you a melee buff. If it, if they're purple, they, um, they lower the cooldown on your clan ability. If they're mm -hmm. cyan, uh, I'll say blue, even though Jerry will get mad at me. Uh, no, no, I think they are blue. Okay, I thought it was, I call him. I call, call him green. green is yeah, me. he gets mad at me because I say, "Oh, I, want, I need the greenish, bluish one," and he'll be like, "It's blue," and I'm like, "Okay, bro, I need that one." I just, I, <laughs> I mean, I mean, the point is, like, you you locate these humans and then you eat them to get your buffs, which I think is really neat and a great way to tie the lore of the of the vampire masquerade world mm -hmm. into this br. Like, it's that is such a cool thing. And then the other thing with that is. If you're witnessed feeding, or if you accidentally kill a human, you get blood hunted. You get revealed on the map, like not just pinged on the mini map, completely revealed on the map as a red outline for a full minute, and you have to survive that. Which is, if you've ever played a BR, you know that if you're revealed to everybody on the map for a minute, it's, it's it's a little rough. It's a little rough. It's a, it it's a hundred percent a wall hack. Like literally everything you're doing, it's not like a blurred outline. Literally it's your entire movement, where you're going, <laughs> what you're doing. And, and yeah, and it's visible for like you, anybody can see you at any time where you are and what you're doing. And, uh, and a lot of people will come to find you and uh, <laughs> it gets interesting. Go ahead, Jelly. I think you said add some that. Yeah. Do you think that, so you start with three points that you can allocate. Mm-hmm allocate into any of these four different types of humans and you allocate them by eating, feeding on a human you get one point and it lowers and if you kill an enemy player or kill npcs around the map called entity you can earn more points or more slots for these feedings and i think this is a really cool idea because it lets this is where you can flex your kind of very personal play style Mm -hmm. And I I want to play really heavy on my clan ability. So I'm going to go get three purples, 50% cooldown reduction, and I'm going to spam the living hell out of that thing, out of my vanish. Let's say if I'm playing a Nosferatu, mm -hmm. right? Or I want to go balls to the wall with melee. So I get three of the choleric blood types. I get 50% additional melee damage and I balls to the wall inside, like, a, or a mix and match of these, mm -hmm. right? If you want just a little bit of benefit for each one. I think that's a really cool way to let players kind of distinguish themselves from each other even though they're playing the same class or they're playing the same types of characters with that too the point uh, it's like i i think i love that you can adjust also based off of the game state so there's been plenty of times where the idea is that i want these three um but you know maybe in the early game we got into this kind of trouble and so now you know it's better if I go with this ability, you know, first or go with this one, or maybe you spawn an area. There's not that many humans. You can now you have to choose. Do I just take the buff that that's nearby? So it's not my ideal one, but it's something it's better than nothing. I don't know when I maybe will get another chance to consume. Um, and so those decisions on the fly, I think, make each game feel unique as well. It's not like you're preloading in with these perks already decided. You have maybe have a game plan, but that that the game could change your game plan, you know, and, and I think that's a, a really, really cool uh, aspect to it. And especially if, as you, you know, maybe are more aggressive or, or tactical about it, you can add more and become you know extremely buffed up with all your abilities on 50 percent, doing 50 percent more damage um and and i think that's cool and you have the ability to you know adjust what those looks like with your perks that you can change and load into the game with um you know so whether that's loading in with 
two you know slots already filled with the color of your choice or or buff of your choice and um and and i think that's a really unique feature um and adds a lot of variance and again play style variance of what you like to play um and 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 i think that's always a, a cool thing if you're giving more onus to the player and and they get to feel like they're getting to feel represented in the game that you made that's that's always fun yeah and you mentioned those perks that every character or every class has nine different perks to choose from all of them starting with the same initial one being bandolier which is you have extra ammo an extra magazine extra ammo that you just carry on your person and extra magazine shots as well Mm -hmm. and that's super useful i think for everybody no problem and then the other eight are slightly different for each class but they all pull from the same pool of perks Mm -hmm. Uh, and so like for instance i've been playing a lot of the bruja class and going a lot of melee. Well, I can pick one that guarantees I start with the one of the best melee weapons in the game. And so that helps me that, okay, now I want to focus the the choleric humans to get that melee damage since I already have the melee weapon. Mm-hmm. Basically, I get to remove half of the search for whatever the optimal build that I want to run. And so I think mm-hmm. that's a cool idea as well that I can start the game, like you said, kind of deciding my path a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. I mean, and I know for me, uh, I've been playing more of the support, you know, classes. So it's like I have been taking like getting armor. Uh, I just think it's valuable to have those. Um, and then based on the way that we're encountering people, whether I want to, you know, have my Q or my E on a lower cooldown, I can choose. I can be like, you know what? We're, we're doing a lot of like, you know, scrappy fights. I need to be able to get in and out a lot more or I need to be able to get closer to my teammates faster so I can heal them or whatever. And uh, and so being able again to maneuver your play style before you even get into the lobby and then while you're in the lobby and it's like it's just a lot of variances and you can choose what you want and I just think that's always valuable. What was uh, your experience with that, Mingus? Well, it just they offer a lot in character customization, not just aesthetically, but through things like that where you get to pick and choose. Um, one thing, here's what I want to ask them. So it's mainly cosmetics that they sell in their store, store and it's mm-hmm. microtransactions, and this is completely free to play. If this were not free to play, would you guys buy it, and for how much? You um, want to go first, Jelly? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, think, I think I would, um, knowing partly because I know the battle royales I've bought in the past, and so, for instance, I bought it in PUBG when it was still in early access. I don't remember what I paid for it. I would guess between the twenty to forty dollar range. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Um, but so with that, right? And PUBG was in a worse state of balance of optimization the whole nine <laughs> when I got into it than this is. This looks more fun than PUBG did. Right. PUBG has like the gunplay aspects, which look really cool. But then there's a lot of just running around aimlessly waiting for something to happen. Whereas this, there's feel it feels like in Blood Hunt, there is always something to be doing. Right. Either moving A to B as fast as possible, using my abilities, getting away from the zone or looking for humans or looking for guns or fighting entity or fighting players. There's always something going on almost too much potentially. Um, And so I think I definitely would have paid between 20 and 40 dollars. For this no problem uh and i probably still would have bought a battle pass on top of it for how much i've enjoyed it thus far knowing that i did buy the battle pass anyway probably would have even put the money up for that on top um i'm in a fairly similar boat um i i definitely would buy probably bought the game um i maybe would have uh because there's just so many brs i probably would have watched like a video or two or watched you know one of my favorite streamers play it or something like that to see if it it's what I would like to play. Um, but, you know, having now played it, I definitely would, yeah, in that 20 to $40 range um, for sure. I don't think, though, if I bought the game that I would be as interested in, in a Battle Pass. Um, I feel like the Battle Pass is okay for what you're getting value-wise, but part of the reason why I felt okay buying the Battle Pass was because I was getting value of just playing the game in general, and so therefore I didn't mind supporting it. And uh, But I don't think necessarily all of the stuff that you get in the battle pass into itself is you know worth price of admission for the game it's and plus the aesthetics now if they had like an adjusted like you know so 
you know, the battle pass gave access to certain things, but while playing the game, you also got more access to, again, what I mentioned earlier, like earning class specific, you know, gear or something along those lines, uh, then, then maybe I would be more okay with a, a battle pass or, or, or store where I could buy other stuff that, but I, I'm not a fan of, you know, buying from a box and then also having to buy a battle pass to get access to more stuff. Um, I, I just feel like it's a little predatory and um, I'm, I'm not a fan of it, um, especially if it usually means that um, as far as aesthetics, just like, you know, they are putting the best aesthetics into a, a pay shop rather than something that you can earn or have access to um, just by owning the game. And so the fact they went free to play, I think, lends more into a battle pass. And so therefore I'm fine with it. But uh, if if I were to pay for it, I, I would be less inclined to be excited about there being a battle pass. What about you, Mingus? Uh, if this wasn't free to play, I would not have ever played it because I don't like VRs. <laughs> but since it since it is free to play, it has gotten me into a BR that I enjoy. So I mm-hmm. think that the game itself is probably worth about. Uh, sorry, I'm getting pings on. Let me turn myself to do not disturb. There we go. <laughs> I think um, I think what, what 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 the hell was I trying to say? I think it's worth about twenty dollars. I think it's it it's from a AAA studio. I don't think the graphic fidelity is there as far as what I would expect from mm. a AAA game. I think it's good, but I don't know. It just seems to be missing something with animations and such. Maybe I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I I don't know. I, I, I'm i not quite sure why I like this Battle Royale, whereas I have it. I didn't like PUBG, did not like Fortnite. It's just not my thing. But I, th- I think it might be the verticality of this one. Um, definitely the vampire sense, because that's like my biggest problem in VRs, is I just never see people before they see me. But with the mm. vampire sense, I could very clearly see that red, red person mm-hmm. show up, so I know where they are, and I can actually fight them. But, um... No, oh, no, yeah, I think it's about it's. I think it's about worth about twenty dollars. But no, no, I would not have ever played this if it was if it wasn't free to play. Uh, I I guess now kind of in that same vein, I have a question for you guys. So, is, from just a pure like aesthetics, and um, you mentioned some of the 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 gameplay, so like the bugs and stuff like that, like and how they interact and and so forth. What were your guys's uh, impressions with that? And, and this is for both of you, so which, whichever one you want to feel it, but. Like, you know, the overall aesthetic of the game and then the bugs and, and so forth as far as like, you know, whether it's sound or, you know, movement abilities not working the way you want them to. What what are the things that you liked and or encountered that you didn't like? Well, I like that it's set in Prague and like I like that it's set in the city. Like, I think that matches really well with what they're going for and the, and the, mm-hmm. the background lore that they've already established. I really like the starting area being interactive. Mm-hmm. You can just play around in there and meet like the leaders of the various vampire clans and all that. Um, it's just like I said, it just seems to be lacking a bit of fidelity that I would expect a little fidelity and polish as far as animations go for, that I would expect from a triple A studio from from somebody that's owned by Tencent. Um, like uh, sliding around the map can be really like movement can be can surprise you sometimes. Like. Mm-hmm. Like, you do the same thing three times in a row, but you get three different results every time. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's so true. Like, I've slidden off many roofs. <laughs> and I, I encounter people that are hopping around all over the goddamn place and sliding and jumping and jumping off and wall jumping off of here. And I'm like, how the fuck are they doing that? Because, like, I try it and, like, it just doesn't work that way for me. Um, that's the other thing, too. We have encountered a few people that were almost 100% certain were hacking. Mm-hmm. Which is which is unfortunate, but that that's just go, going to happen in, in all these games, especially a free game where there's really not much consequence. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, I really like the aesthetics that the the aesthetic stuff that you can purchase in the store. Um, I just I haven't earned that much currency, but the currency that I ha- have used, I've I've been well spent. I like my glowing yellow eyes on my. Dude, they're so cool. Yeah, we're, we're we're jealous of those eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> they're so cool. But yeah, it's a, you, it's a cool game. Uh, I'm pretty much with Mangoose. I think the overall aesthetic is there. Absolutely. The one, I guess, thing that pulls me out constantly, and we've had several conversations about it, is the hair. does not it, fit the style yeah. as well as I feel like it should. It feels like I'm on low poly, or I'm on low texture hair on every setting. 
Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very strange feeling. Um, so I wish that was slightly better, but I agree with Mangus. The fidelity things are missing. Uh, the, the one that I can speak to the most is the Vandal class. Their E, really effective ability when you land it, but the targeting on it is some of the worst I've ever felt in my entire life. That you can hit the button and sometimes you'll go exactly where you're pointing and other times you'll fly to, through the moon because that's just where it decided to take you. Yeah, mm -hmm. And it blows my mind every single time. Um, and so it's stuff like that that I wish was way more fleshed out than it is and surprises me because a lot of that existed in their test in December. And so it surprised me that it still existed going into now. Whereas in the test in December, I can go like, okay, yeah, they're still, they're testing everything fine, whatever. But this I expected a lot more completion on for where we're at. I'm going to echo basically what you guys said. I, I think um, the world in which they've built uh, the game feels really cool uh the lighting is neat uh despite that it being at night you you just don't feel like you're shrouded in complete darkness the, it, the lighting is done well in my opinion um it's not necessarily part of the aesthetic but i think it is the sound quality i think is pretty good um there's plenty of times where i feel like i'm you know absolutely when i'm on a roof i feel like i'm actually walking on certain types of roof textures like there's there's some the sound will change the, the it'll it'll feel aesthetically pleasing for your ears um and i do think i i hear players pretty well um I, I know i wear headphones and so i can sometimes hear people coming up and i'm able to call it out i like that i think that's cool you should i feel like be able to hear somebody who's literally clawing themselves up a wall and you can um you know you can hear people using their abilities so you can hear sometimes someone using their jump or their heel or something like that and i think that adds to um you know the playability of the game um, but I, I see yeah, the inconsistencies are, are sometimes sometimes it pulls you out. Um, I know for me, again, I play more of the, the support class, but I'll hit my Q and sometimes it'll do like a weird stutter animation before I can hit it again. It's not like I can hit Q and then Q again in, in one instance. It's a, sometimes it'll stutter. Um, I've slid off so many roofs. Uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, you will do that. You'll slide and sometimes you'll slide forever. <laughs> and then one time you'll slide and it'll like you'll hit some invisible bump on a roof that wasn't you can't see and then it'll jolt up and now you're standing up in front of everybody going oh I'm here <laughs> uh, and and then the other thing too for me is uh, I'll try to like jump from one roof to another roof and I'll maybe miss but I'll land on it and then I can't climb up despite me slamming on the space bar mm -hmm. it I start sliding all the way down and so there's moments where like the bugs can pull you out and you're like dude it felt so good and now it doesn't and and those jarring changes sometimes are 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 hard and and I think that would to Mangus's point before pull me away from maybe paying for it like there are mo if if it, this wasn't a free to play game and I knew those bugs existed I probably would feel like what the heck did I spend my 20 or 40 dollars for if this is how I feel and it, it, yeah, so those things were a bit annoying, for sure. Um, so what do you guys think about like so? There, there's various rarities, just like in every BR for every weapon, but in this one, it doesn't. The damage doesn't increase or decrease depending on weapon rarity. It's mainly magazine capacity or reload time. Mm -hmm. I really like that because you don't feel as useless if you pick up like a green rarity item as opposed to a golden rarity item. You know what I mean? I think that's pretty cool. What do you guys think of that? Because I know a lot of people are kind of, well, I know so I've spoken to a few people that are a bit turned off by that. Um, I mean, for me, I, I first of all, I didn't realize it at first. I, I wasn't paying attention in that same regard until actually I think one of you guys told me. I thought that it was increasing. So for me, I would like, because that's almost how it is in every other game, you know, better color, better damage, you know, better weapon. Um, and once I realized that, that my, you know, upgrading from green to blue to purple, maybe it is better. It, it, it's not, not better, guys. It is better. But it's not so, like... I guess aggressively better that you're you're really missing out if you don't have it. Um, somebody who rolls up on you with a gold weapon and you're still using a green, you still realistically have a chance of of beating them in a gunfight. Um, you know, it, again, you still need to land your shots probably better than they do because they have more ammo than you or whatever. But like, so from that perspective, I actually like it because it is exactly that. It still feels like I have a chance to win even if you know I don't have all the best gear because. In a BR, at least like you know, using PUBG for an example, 
there were metas of what the strongest you know weapons were and if you didn't find one because you just didn't land in the right spot and by the time you rotated to it if you weren't in the end circle with those weapons you lost more times than you won and you mm-hmm. you couldn't outskill sometimes the best weapons in the game and i feel like in this you, you theoretically can i think the melees is probably the biggest difference the the two purple melees by far are better than the blue melees that you can pick up or the green melee but um as far as the gunplay uh i think that at least from the the the, the color changes um i do think they need some balance around the weapons themselves like what you know they do but um outside of that the color changes is really neat. I, th- I think that's pretty cool. What about you, Jelly? I think for sure the I think it's it offers more, like you said, opportunity for me to go in with lower tier weapons and still have a chance to come out with a win, right? And whether it be the final fight or any fight, right? The, and it's the biggest differences are not necessarily tier to tier. It's basically every two tiers. So green mm-hmm. to purple has a pretty large difference between the two things. If you're using greens going against purples, it's going to be you're going to be at a slight disadvantage. Whereas greens to blues, is it still slight? Yes, but it's very, very slight, right? You don't feel that difference nearly as much, right? There may be a four bullet ammo count difference between the two of you. And that's really the main difference. Whereas green to gold could be a 40 ammo count difference. And that is a huge difference for a fight because you'll have to reload two or three times before they ever have to once. So I think that's so and there's an aesthetic of player skill expression in that all the weapons Mm. for the most part feel really balanced that I can go into a fight against an SMG with an LMG and either one of us could come out with a win, right? It really comes down to who shot better, who played better, who, who managed their weapon more correctly. It really comes down to who, who comes out with the win. And I think that's really cool because I, I've gone into fights where I've made the choice actively to take a green, or blue LMG over a purple dual crossbow, right? And uh, and I because I fought better and shot better, my green beats the purple out, right? And or beats the gold person out. Mm-hmm. And because I took a weapon I'm comfortable with that I prefer, and was just able to manage with the rarity I had and the weapon I had against another person. So I think that's super super cool. The the melees are definitely a different story, <laughs> and and I'm I'm glad that we brought those up because those to me. Those are the one of the most imbalanced things in the game, no question. And they also lack the diversity that we have with ranged weapons. For something that is so prevalent in the game, having four melee weapons total, two being blue and two being purple, mm-hmm. me- means that your diversity in how melee fights go down ends up in a slap fight nine times out of ten. Yeah. Right? Like and that. it feels terrible for it. And I think part of that. <laughs> excuse me i think part of that comes down to the both purple melees have a right click special ability mm-hmm. the katana has that you can deflect bullets or reflect bullets and the scourge blades has a dash that does damage and both of those things will even if the damage didn't increase between tiers because i believe it does on melees their their damage is different um if even if the damage didn't change the right clicks make those weapons infinitely better than either of the blue melees. Right. Yeah, and they can be fight deciders. Mm-hmm. Throws it off because if you melee, and the other big thing about melee is you heal for a percentage of the damage you deal, which is a whole balanced conversation. 50%. Just, just as a mechanic means that you're doing more damage with your purples, you heal for a percentage of that damage, and you have an extra ability. So you basically are getting two legs up against a single tier lower of of melee right if you're going to a melee fight and you have a blue against a purple you will lose 10 times out of 10 right assuming both of you are landing all of your hits you will lose 10 times out of 10 just because that's how much stronger they are and i think that's the disconnect between ranged and melee is ranged feels like a skill expression melee feels like who had the better one and it just yeah. comes down to that who got to who hit the other one first really yeah which is why I start with a purple melee because it, yeah. if the fight comes down to that, at at worst, I'm on evil playing playing field as somebody else. Well, with, with the melee too, it's they're all different weapons, so it's not really really tiers that are separating them. That's true. But like the the baseball bat does, I think sixty damage, and it just has like you swipe twice horizontally, then once vertically. Mm-hmm. The axe does seventy damage. It's all three horizontal swipes. 
the katana actually only does 75 damage per swing, so it's only like 5 damage more than the axe, but it's so much better because you can reflect bullets at people mm-hmm. with it. And then the scorch blades actually deal the least amount of damage per hit, but you swing twice yep. with every swing, so it's actually significantly more. And all the and melee weapons does damage. Right, yeah. You can dash through people and deal damage. So and then and they all deal it's all fifty percent lifesteal. So Which is insane. Somebody could be unloading on you, shooting you directly in the face with 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 a silenced SMG, and you could just chop right through them like it's nothing mm-hmm. because you're just yep. healing up. I've had that happen. I literally had a purple LMG and I'm full left click in the guy's face and I still died to the to the blades. <laughs> it, it just it's so much. It, well, and, and, and we were talking about the perks earlier with the additional 50% damage that you can stack with mm-hmm. uh, choleric. That's 150%. It's just it, you're just it's mind boggling to me that that is a thing. And, and, and it, a lot of times I've had it. I think it. Oh God, I, I want to say like a, a ridiculous number, but I'm going to try not to be dramatic. But I want to say like 60 to 70 percent of our fights have ended because of a melee versus being, you know, winning a, a gunfight or outplaying your opponent by, you know, using the, you know, advantages that you have uh, through movement abilities or or whatever. Like there, it, it, it just nope. They got to hit me with a melee better than me. And there was literally nothing I could do about it. I, I can't get away. Because they, they can right click and stick onto me, use their abilities to stay on top of me, and you're just, I just die. It, it, it's it's a, it's probably to me the worst feeling in the game. I I would not be upset if they just said, "Hey, we realize this is a problem. We're just taking these out for now, and we're going to come back to it, and you guys just enjoy shooting each other." Um, because to me, that's how bad it is. I don't know what they can do other than just like completely gut what their their the current weapons look like and how they feel to make it viable in what I would consider a typical BR or BR format. Um, and and that's that's frustrating to deal with. And then again, that's not even going into which classes benefit from that even more. For example, Enforcer being super strong can dash through you and now you are silenced, can't use your weapons against them, but they can still use theirs against you. And you can't go use your weapon abilities, right, yeah. Yeah, you can't use your weapon abilities against them. So like, it, it's just, yeah, if you have an Enforcer dashing on you, they're, they can close the distance by being immune, so you can't even shoot them while you try and keep them away. And then they get to <laughs> dash through you, so you can't use your melee abilities. It's just, oh god, man, I hate that class. I hate it so much. <laughs> and it's I like think they that... get a stasis gem, just as their, <laughs> uh, as their ability. Where's, yeah, where's my stopwatch? Uh, and another mechanic that's actually unique to this that we haven't talked about, that I just thought of, is when you get downed, you're actually not out. It's not, it's not like other BRs where you're bleeding out over a course of time, and then when that timer runs out, you're out, and you're, but mm-hmm. your team can res you. This is, you have a timer. And in trios, it's 40 seconds. After 40 seconds, you get back up with 50 health and can run around again. Mm-hmm. And so with that in mind, it's not just a matter of watching to make sure you don't get that player you just down doesn't get revived by their team. Now it's, I have to execute that person because in 40 seconds, if they're still, if they're still crawling around, they get back up and I could mm-hmm. be in trouble for that. Mm-hmm. And so adding that in, you've now got downing a player doesn't really down them half the time yeah. until you've fully gunned them down to make sure they will never come back. Right. And so it's a weird kind of juxtaposition of like, I downed a guy, but I still have to know where he is in the back of my right. head while I'm fighting these other two guys. But if they crawl away in a good spot or they use an ability to get away, sometimes you're just SOL. And they just get away because they can get back up afterwards. And you can't perform the diablerization on them while they're down, though. Yeah. Uh, but if in trios, especially, that is insanely hard to pull yeah. off if they're yeah. not, if their team isn't entirely down. So it's this weird, it feels like rock, paper, scissors. You always have to throw the same thing every single time. Like, <laughs> and you're hoping that the enemy player just throws the thing that you beat instead of actually play, having some skill involved. Um, and with that, with melee's healing, so many players, including myself, have turned to instead of just turning the fight on somebody else, diablerizing or letting them get away, you switch to your melees, hit them a bunch of times, heal back your health as well as fully kill them, and then turn your attention on yeah. the, the next person. Yeah. Which uh, there's a lot of problems with the down state in that regard. Is that when you go to the down state, you have 200 health again. 
that means that I have to land effectively three to four melees on a downed person to kill them and then turn my attention. That is an extra three to four seconds that I'm spending on this person that I've already technically beat in a fight before I can move on to the next person in the fight. And that is beyond frustrating. Having to go through and diabolization takes eight seconds, I think it is eight to ten seconds. So it's no matter what, I'm forever. wasting time instead of getting back into the fight while it's going on. Sure. Which just feels awkward and yeah. feels odd. That the TTK overall in the game too is I think it's slower than most BRs. You guys probably play a lot more BRs than me, but it seems like it takes yeah, unless you're laser beaming headshots into somebody, it takes a while to to drop anybody in the game. And then of course, like you said, when they're down, like I've I've pumped a full magazine of AK into somebody, but because they had their ass turned to me and I couldn't hit them in the head, like I ran out of ammo trying to kill a downed person. Mm -hmm. And you have to respect the fact that they're down because they'll come back. Yeah. I uh yeah, no, I agree that I think it's the most to me it's probably a, among the most frustrating parts. Uh and and for all reasons expressed. I mean the, the in threes, I feel like it's the most egregious um, because there's just so much more opportunity for other teams to collapse. Like it, it, this map is small for one thing. Um, using the uh, ability to see through all the gray, whatever your X basically, but being able to see through walls and all that stuff and detect other players, you can he see little circles of shots going off across the map. So you know when when action is taking place, and you can actively choose to go and clean up or third party and it's it's very egregious I, I mean i think it's most egregious in threes um it still happens in all the other modes but when you again are trying to keep track you want to fight you used a lot of ammo to kill them you now have to remember so one of our teammates is down okay so i choose between getting him up so we have a third person in case we get third partied no 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 go find that guy i'll get up go you know he's over here or i think he was there and you're trying to run around and you're looking down at your feet trying to find where they are or they dropped off the roof and now you got to find them amongst civilians and it's like it's just a headache it's a pain in the ass I i'm i like it when it works out for us because there's been plenty of times where one of us has gotten out and we managed to come back into the game and, and, and compete from that perspective i think it's cool i really do i think it gives people an opportunity to maybe you got ambushed you got away you can come back and and still fight to but it's it's the if it was like 50 health instead of a full 200 or 100 health maybe or something like that because not only do, again what you mentioned with the healing with the swords or whatever because now you're at full health and do i don't know it's just it just feels bad it's just not a fun interaction diabolizing puts you into a position in a br so i i love brs but you are standing still i get headshot all the time trying to diob somebody because i'm standing still in a fucking br sorry for my language but it's dude it's just <laughs> it's frustrating like i don't it's not it's it, with armor being hard to come by health being difficult to obtain unless you're meleeing everything it, it, it just it doesn't lend itself well to feeling like i played this fight the way i'm supposed to i did all the things but now i'm being punished for it because I have to clean up. I have to do the chores now in order to make this fully done. And so the time to kill, like you mentioned, sorry, I'm not, I know I'm monologuing a lot, but the time to kill initially is fine. I think the time that it takes to get through the first 150 health and down an opponent, I'm not, I, I don't hate that part. I, you know, sometimes it's hard because they'll use abilities and all that. That to me is fine. That's unique to this game. It's super cool. It's the after the fact. Not only did I have to go through that first 150, now I have another health pool that I have to go through. Hope that another team doesn't show up while I'm doing that. I, I keep track of my my teammates, where the opponents went. It's just too much. It's crazy. And but you, you hit on a good a good point of this. It's so great. We we're fighting three v threes. We down mm -hmm. the entire enemy team, but we took damage, and they're all still crawling on the ground. We have to go finish them off. Mm -hmm. Now we have the choice to make of: Do I heal myself, or do I go execute these players and put myself at further risk? Mm -hmm. Right? Because if I if I choose and if I choose to heal myself, just using blood bags or or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. they may be getting up in the time that I finish off my heal. Now I'm back in the same fight I just was in, or they run away or whatever it is, and there's no benefits at all. I just wasted resources, yep. and so it's this weird. It's a weird feeling sometimes to be in those fights. And if if just one of them gets up and runs away, they can res their entire team at a res point. I mean, they'll mm -hmm. be lacking in resources and weapons and everything, but still, their whole team will just be back up. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I really think, and that's why players have turned to the melee to finish people off, mm -hmm. is I get to heal and I get to confirm that they're dead. Right? Yep. I get to do both of those things at the same time rather than choosing one or the other and potentially taking a risk of another team showing up while I'm 50 health and deciding to execute that player. I'm laughing because I'm, I'm remembering a moment where literally we it's 2v1 and a guy is, is meleeing. He gets one, like, I think it was he got Convey down and is meleeing Convey to kill while I'm still shooting him. And he heals through all yeah. my damage, turns to me, melees me to death, and then kills me afterwards. And, and there's nothing I could do. Like, I mean, other than disengage, leave Convey there and, and, and you know, and not try to make the fight work like and and i think uh it all those things are the compounding interest that for me is it's like those are the things that make me even though i've played the game a lot i really do like the game but it those are the things where it does make me go like oh what why am i playing now like or in, you know okay well let's we start racking our brain i know we all have done it already we talked about it like okay so what could we have done better there sometimes it was just like i don't know it, it, yeah it, not ha and not have it happen in the first place and, and we started <laughs> questioning whether we take fights like because you you have to know okay wait if i take this fight we win the fight can we execute everybody and get out in one piece or or will we be in a position where we took the fight because sometimes fights end up moving across like mm -hmm. six seven buildings or whatever will i be and when we started getting smarter about it and, and maybe that's just the evolution of the game we'll be like okay do you know what we can't finish this fight we're wasting resources. Let them go. Back up. Let's heal. Let's do that. And 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 I think that that's something to be said. Maybe that that's the way that you you play the game. But the way the the map is so small and the way the zones close, it really lends itself to being aggressive and and taking fights. And if you leave too many people up in those final circles, it's just oh boy, it's it's nuts. That well, that's the way I've started playing solos, which I that's normally what I play as solos, mm -hmm. and um. You know, initially I was trying to finish off everybody I could. Now, I'll, if I deal a significant amount of damage, but I've been there for a few seconds and they're not dead, I'm out. I'm gone because there's mm -hmm. going to be five motherfuckers coming up behind me to kill me. So <laughs> the like, resurrection true. thing, like is somebody will worse. kill them. Yeah, the resurrection thing is even worse in solos because the resurrection time is ten seconds, not forty seconds. Right. Yep. So uh, ten seconds is nothing. If I choose to heal, they will get up. There is not yeah. even a question of maybe their timer is in the right place. It's a guarantee they're going to get up and either be gone or be right back on me one way or the other. And you've got other players coming in at the same time. And, if it's and I really think the the if they want to keep the system the way it is now without fundamentally changing some things, they have to lower the health pool of downed players. Hundred percent putting them back at two hundred health. Just takes so it already takes a little bit longer to deal with in fights. And I think that feels good, like you said, Viking. I think that aspect, the time to kill, feels good there. But when they immediately gain 200 health when I down them, feels terrible because I have to put the same amount of ammo I just put into them to down them to then kill them again on the ground. And that just feels awful. And in solos too, you get an, unless it's ranked, ranked it's one death and you're gone. But mm. just regular solo blood hunt, you can eat. NPCs that will give you an extra life. So you can die, come back, find one of those NPCs, eat them, mm -hmm. go get killed, come back. It's just a constant, it keeps going. I've played solo games where when I come back, the resurrection, I do nothing but seek out another one of those people first. Mm -hmm. and then I get them, and then, okay, now I can go back into the game. Did you get all your gear back? I love doing yeah. that. I love <laughs> yeah. that so much. <laughs> Every once in a while, though, the, the person that killed you the first time will kill you the second time. Yeah. <laughs> I had that uh, today. I killed the same person. No, was it? Yeah, this morning. I killed the same person three times. Like, I can yeah. tell. It was I would do it person. 100%. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad, though. I felt so bad. One of these times, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Goes down. <laughs> I'm going to get him this time. <laughs> there was double pistols, headshots every time. So they... Oh, dude, I like the double pistols. Those feel good. Um, I think the... so... Oh, good. I just want to say the best moment I had in the game, and I think I caught it. I actually recorded it during the last one, is somebody was down and I was healing up by chopping them with a katana. Somebody started shooting me from behind. I finished that guy uh, out turned around and just reflected all the other guy's bullets back into him and down nice. him as well. And it's like melee weapons are way too strong in this game. They mm -hmm. really are. They really are. <laughs> yeah, if I oh. if I could change two things, right, just off the cuff, mm -hmm. I would cut melee healing probably down to the 15% at the highest. 
where mm-hmm. you can still sure you get some i get the idea is like they're vampires right you're drawing blood so you get health for that cool i understand the aesthetic reasons behind that but 50 percent is far too much to be earning from those melees yeah. Right. But and then I would also cut health to probably 50 when you're downed. Right. And just lower those two things. I think that brings the quality of life of the game up immensely by itself because melees are still viable, but they're not the end all be all of final fights. And downing players doesn't feel nearly as frustrating. There's a there's a risk reward in downing players. I can diablerize for the extra human slot, but that takes extra time and leaves me exposed or I can Mm -hmm. very quickly just get rid of them, move on to the next thing. And, and it, that's the risk reward in the current state. It's risk risk. No matter what, you're taking a risk with downing players. And that just feels bad. I, I kind of agree with the two things that, that I would change. Um, I probably would adjust the numbers a little bit. I I'd maybe do like, you know, 25% maybe of healing something along those lines. Um, because I do think the idea was that, you know, you should be rewarded for the risk of getting that close. Right. I think the problem with it currently is that you could there is no risk of getting that close. You're actually gaining an advantage in, in a massive one at that. Um and so that's I think a big one. Um if they were to if you were to adjust the um the downed health, uh which I don't disagree with, um I would probably argue for lowering the time that it takes for someone to be able to get up. Um because if you can theoretically get away and get out of line of sight or they start getting third partied and you get a chance to get up, you know, in threes, at least, um, you know, for someone who's not playing my class, you, it takes a long time to get up. And if someone could with a stray bullet almost kill you, that might feel bad. Uh, you know, it wouldn't take much to just turn, hit them, you know, three times and then get into the fight. And so I do think you should have to use resources to finish the down. I just don't think you should have to use the, the current amount. It, it's, it's too much. Right. Um, you guys have both played a lot more solos than I have. It, it, now playing solos and playing threes, is there a, or even the duos, is there a mode that you think is more got it right than the others uh, of the three that are available? And that includes I, solos and solos ranked. Like, do you feel like one or multiples feel better than the others, or uh, how's your guys' take on that? I, I think solo unranked is perfect for new players because you do Mm -hmm. get that second chance and it it, you know it's chaotic but you can find your niche and you can learn the game a little bit um i think duos was just right for me as far as just actual just regular old gameplay i i would completely agree i think duos hits the sweet spot of of res timers to down timers to amount of players to third parties to all of those things I think it fits really well in duos, whereas it's slightly overbearing in trios and then slightly underwhelming in solos, potentially, depending. Um, and then solos is a, per- a great environment for... Solos unranked is a great environment for new players to get their handle on the game without going in and then five seconds in dying and being like, oh, great, 10-minute wait time now for the, my next five-second death, <laughs> right? Like, it's... Because that's the way... That's what feels the worst about BRs when you're getting into them. Sure is if you die instantly now i have to spend five minutes queuing up for another game to die in five seconds and yep. it just that that feels bad constant constant constant, constant. the load screen of, of death all yeah. times yeah uh, i do agree uh, i think with your guys's takes I, I think duos felt the best of them um it's a bummer obviously because you know you want to play with as many friends as you can get on the game at once um so trios was what we probably played the most um at least um me jelly and convey but like i did when we played duos duos felt the most fair i guess across like you did have to use resources to kill the downed players but it didn't feel like i didn't have a chance if i took it with the fight well to re, you know be ready for a third party um you know and and, and kind of handle the chaos a little bit um the solos uh, the other aspect that we didn't touch on is that when you come back you come back with decent gear too like yeah. normally in um the when you get downed and you get res back by your your teammates uh, you have just your starting pistol or in the, if you're jelly you have your just your starting uh, weapon your sword um and that that's okay but if you end up with another <laughs> and you make it fun of the way i yeah. uh <laughs> If you end up in another fight right away, you're at a, a significant disadvantage. Whereas with the solos, um, unranked, you you come back with the a you know a blue think AR AK. and a blue melee. Yeah, blue AR and a blue, melee, which 
to me, feels really good. Again, especially for new players, you're, you're not sure of where to land. You're not sure where to, you know, you have quest items you're supposed to be picking up and you know, all that stuff. Uh, it does feel good that, yeah, you're not immediately put back into a lobby of loading screens and, and all that stuff and feeling like you don't get to play the game. So uh, I, I agree with you guys. Something I read about BRs a long time ago is somebody was talking about, I forget who said it, but they were talking about why they're successful is because the amount of time you put in is equal to how much satisfaction you get. So if you come in and get killed immediately, that's only like five minutes of your time that, that you spent. But it, you know, if you spend like 20 minutes, you're, you're going to be at least like top eight, top seven, and you're going to feel, you know, pretty decent, you know? And then of course, if you spend a long time in there and you end up winning, then it feels absolutely amazing. And I think there's always all BRs at varying levels of this, right? But there's always, you're always doing something, whether it be traveling from location to location or in fights or looking for gear, right? Your 20 minutes is 20 minutes doing something most of the time. You're very rarely sitting, holding up, waiting for something to go down, right? You Unless didn't play PUBG with me. Yeah, you didn't play PUBG with me. <laughs> um, but, but that's especially in this one, right? Where, sure. there's, where cover isn't quite the same as it is in other BRs. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it's a great way to put it is that you get in what you put in or you get out what you put in. And I think that's a, a good, a great way to sum it up. Um, I, I also agree with that, that sentiment. Um, I actually, and I, I I'm curious what your guys' thoughts, uh, Mingus, you haven't played a lot of BRs, but I, I'm just going to lean on your general expertise with FPS. How do you guys feel about the bloom mechanic versus, you know, having bullet, accuracy based off of um spray patterns i think it works pretty good in the game um like with the ak i mean it's somewhat real well it's not realistic with the lmg but it's somewhat realistic in that the longer you spray with that thing the more erratic it's going to get like it would be even more realistic if it would climb but mm -hmm. like with the ak like you fire in bursts you're going to be a hell of a lot more accurate over a long distance than just hammering on it and just you know Filing full fire and full cyclic, but like the LMG starts out bloom and then gets more laser focused as you it go. Does. That's yeah, I love the LMG for that. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it's a little weird from that perspective. Uh, I do I'm... like how they say that normally you wouldn't be able to just carry an LMG around, but since they're vampires, <laughs> they can do it. I like how they, they added that. Jump in. with an LMG and climb <laughs> walls with an LMG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not just the L any LMG. This is like a water cold World War One. <laughs> LMG that you're rocking. Big giant. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It's massive. Or a minigun. Come on. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Let's, uh... <laughs> what about uh, you, I, Jelly? I, I agree with Mangoose. I think in this game it works fairly well. Uh, I also would say that I have learned guns better in this game than I have, or faster in this game than I have in previous BRs. Where basically within two to three runs with the same gun, Mm -hmm. I basically am like, okay, I understand how this functions intuitively mm -hmm. and instead of having to like sit there and be like, okay, I need to pull down to the right and then down to the left and then straight down afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Right. And yeah. really analyze it. This is way more intuitive that I can pick up a gun, get a rough feel for it and be like, oh, okay. And then figure out how to dial it in very, very quickly. I, I, I also I'm, we're echoing a lot here. Um, to me, it felt a little bit more like uh, like a Fortnite style of, of, you know, with the bloom um, initial Fortnite was to me garbage bloom uh, but they did start to hone it in and, and start to feel better um i noticed with some of these it, it did feel a little bit like um there, there was a little bit of a you had to pull down to get accuracy but i do also like with the sniper rifles you aim at the head you shoot the head you don't have to like worry about you know angling it up at this and you know calculate for you know gravity and wind and all, no you don't have to do any of those things you, you shoot it at their face and then it should in theory hit them in the face um there are some weapons i feel like sometimes uh just laser um and and that sometimes feels bad like the tracking on when you're jumping and doing all that stuff and you, they can just follow you and just constantly keep the damage on you um but I, I didn't notice a massive difference as far as the the bloom being a detriment like you it did feel like i mean other than the lmg going from big to small which is weird i get it, it, it seems the opposite uh, uh i did feel like what you mentioned jelly that you could um learn the weapons and they weren't punishingly hard to learn. Like you could figure them out, pick up almost, I, I feel like I can pick up almost any weapon and use it fairly consistently. Revolver is probably the one that's the most punishing to me, just because you really need to be hitting headshots with it, um, which is very hard to do. But if you are, if you're a shroud, you're, you're loving revolver. 
um, because it does a a lot of damage. But Mm -hmm. yeah. The crossbows have their place too, but they're, especially the double crossbows, the pistol crossbows, Mm -hmm. the fire, the explosive bolts seem very underwhelming. Um, Yep. Now they nerfed during the last play test, the, the regular crossbow, the shoulder fired crossbow, because that thing was nuts. Yeah, it was stupid. It's still better than I think people give it credit for, especially if you're playing Prowler like I do. You throw the bats out and you detect somebody that's behind, that's like hiding behind something on top of a roof. You just start lobbing those, the gas in there and they, they got to run. Even on like for final fights, I've run in several times where Mm -hmm. I run crossbow as my secondary weapon, knowing I have purple melees as well. And so when the fight gets, gets that close, switch the crossbow, plop one down right on top of us, pull out my melees. Come at me, please. Yeah. I dare you. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? Fight in poison and take melee damage? No. <laughs> and I do I, love that if you direct hit somebody with the crossbow, the gas just stays on them. Like, they carry the gas with them. <laughs> and it does a lot of damage, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, and you're rewarded for your accuracy with it, right? Because that was probably one of the harder ones to aim, especially over distance. You do actually have to like try and there is, it. There is drop to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I I do think that's that's pretty cool. I wish. Um, and this is an aesthetics thing, kind of going back to it with the poison, for example. Uh, I kind of wish it was a little bit more uh, noticeable, which is friendly poison and which is mm-hmm. not friendly because i know for a fact when jelly is throwing poison at his feet i'm kind of nearby and i'm like oh crap poison at my feet and i'm <laughs> running away from it getting into a position maybe not most beneficial to me it's really difficult to sell whose is whose um whereas with like the bats for example you can tell the bats are my, are friendly bats and the other bats are you know enemy bats um uh, so i i think that the clarity on that would be nice uh, i don't know exactly how they would do that and still keep it looking like a you know poison cloud that you want to see, but uh, that that's just a, a small complaint I think of of something I would like to see adjusted. Honestly, if they just recolored it to make enemy poison red and allied poison green, yeah, that'd be fine. Be, because sure. simple, the red gas is aesthetic with the zone, right? So right. great, you you can say it's a similar way to that, and then you just know allied is green, so it's not a big deal. I, I think that would be. A very simple change that would be just as effective in letting you know which is which. What, Do you what? know if the, uh, the 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 little self grenade of gas immunity the and gas, yeah. yeah, well, so does that work on the poison class? I didn't think so. Okay, I, I was oh, does it? I thought it did. I I would they have hoped it did. It would make it, it more viable. I don't know. I don't huh. think it does because it specifically states it's red gas immunity. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I don't know. Uh, the, the thing I, is I got a win a against gas. the guy that was using a crossbow, and I came out of the red gas with the neutralizer and killed him. But I did kill him with a scorch blade, so maybe it was dealing damage to me. And I just didn't. <laughs> you just didn't just healing it. too much. I was just healing right through it, of course. But uh, I think that I'd, if that doesn't work, I actually think that that would be uh, something because there, if you made the poison gas like a portable red gas, almost like the zone is using, I think that actually because there's perks that you can use. Uh, that that maybe would be more viable because right now we feel like they're almost not. Or just like I'm not. I mean, if I'm going into the red gas, the ga- the fight is probably bad already. And I, <laughs> I, I can take I can take another perk that does more to facilitate the whole game rather than the niche situations in which I would need to go into red gas to to survive it. But if you have that and you see, okay, hey, they threw down a poison, or there's the the grenade that one of the uh, Nosferatu have. Saboteur. I can yeah, the saboteur. I can go through that and be immune or take maybe reduced damage to it uh, because i went with this perk where i put on that resource in in game the grenade self grenade bread gas yeah. immunity thing I, it might add more variety i wonder if that's something they can look into but i think that's again, sort of fairly that's, niche that's like a nerf to the the saboteur class and it's a nerf and that's to the that's the problem is where well. you run into buffs that also nerf other people sure. that don't nerf everyone it's just a straight buff to one class or a straight nerf to one class. Yeah. Mm. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on too before before I forget is the differences in animation whenever you're feeding, because it really cracked it. me up. Because I guess you guys <laughs> don't run with an Osferatu a lot. I always run Osferatu, and I was running threes with these guys, and I fed on somebody, and Viking was like, <laughs> "What the hell?" Because <laughs> like Nosferatu straight leaps on top of people, like puts them in a gu- in the guard pretty much, and like tears their neck out it's it's pretty gruesome when the nosferatu feeds whereas he's toriador and toriador basically makes out with them 
<laughs> it's true. And it, Bruce it, just kind of, or uh, Bruja just kind of brute forced their way in there and just yeah. like, yeah, just give me your neck. Thank you. I'm just, yeah. I'm not, no questions asked. I, that and that does speak well to the aesthetic. I, I think that that's a, uh, one of those things that you, you, they didn't need to do it, but it's cool that they did. Like, I, yeah. I, so for me, I do. I played the uh, the the more uh, <laughs> the sexy vampires, if you will. You know, the sparkly vampires. Um, and it, it is it's it's fun. Like, I so you, she goes in and they they like wrap the arms around them, like you know, like they're seducing them. Well, and then after they get the blood, they go and push them off, which is it, I just love it every time. It's like get off me! I got what I needed from you, and it's just it feels aesthetically like I'm connected it a little bit more each time we do those things. It may, it matches what you would expect, and I, I think that lends itself well to the overall feel of the game. And, and they do a lot of those things, and I and I think that's cool, um, and and makes the game enjoyable. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah. I think it's about time to start closing it up on on, on Blood Hunt. Um, <laughs> did you guys have any final thoughts on the game before we we close out here? I'll let you go, Viking. Um, I mean, so I would encourage anyone to play it. I, I, it, I mean, I know we talked a lot about things that we'd like to see change, and I think the things we want to see change is because we enjoy playing the game. Like that's the the big one. Um, and that there's a lot more of the game that I enjoy that those things that make me enjoy it less um, aren't maybe going to stop me from playing it, but it would make me want to play the game more or I would feel more enjoyment from the game if they added it. Um, I I think we touched on a lot of the the, the aspects that are the best. I I think the skins look cool. I think the aesthetics of it, other than the hair, I'm I'm hopeful that they can fix some of the things with the hair. Some of the cosmetics, some of the bugs, like, you know, the, the red dots not ever going away on the menu. Some of those things are a little annoying. But overall... For a BR, it's one of the better, at least, okay, let me say this. It's not maybe the best BR, but I've had a lot of fun playing this BR. I played a lot, and I mean a lot of PUBG. I like this game more than I liked PUBG. PUBG was hard and punishing and just brutal, but when you won, it was one of the most, you know, exhilarating feelings in the world. I don't get that same exhilaration from winning this game, but I'm still excited when I win. Um, and, and I think that lends itself to being a fun cool i'm excited to see what they do with more ranked options if they go that route um i would love to see what threes look like i think they should make some adjustments to the map and making maybe reduce the amount of people in threes or something like that because threes to me feels the worst of them but um you always want to play with more people and i think that should be the more fun mode is the threes um but yeah so that's i guess my my final thoughts play the game tell us what you guys think how have you felt about it in the comments um i'd love to know and yeah what about you jelly yeah, I completely agree. I mean, it's free to play, which is a huge benefit for them. Um, there are no pay to win aspects at all. It's all mm-hmm. purely cosmetic in terms of any purchases you decide to make, which is a huge boost, especially in today's climate of free to play releases. Uh, I mean, I put 50 hours into the game in two weeks, so mm-hmm. I have played it a lot. I plan to play it more, especially as like updates and things come out. Right. I definitely would be in still into playing, so I, I would recommend it for sure. Schmangoose? Yeah, um, I don't like BRs, but I actually do like this game. So I think if you're out there and you don't like Battle Royales, but you're on the fence about trying this game out, I think it's a I think it's a good one to try. I think it's a fun BR if you just want to enjoy the experience. Like I said, just the solos, the unranked solos are super easy for new players to get into and have a good time with. So yeah, uh, all around, I think it's uh, I think it's worth trying. I think it's worth trying. But uh, that is going to wrap it up for this week. Um, I suppose we should we should do plugs. I'll, also, I do want to mention, too, that um, normally what we plan to do with these is we're going to upload the actual gameplay of us playing these games on the Viking Jedi's channel. Uh, but this time, when we recorded, my voice wasn't there, so it just sounds like Jedi is talking to himself the entire Which time. Which is not abnormal. It's not abnormal. <laughs> uh, tend to be talking a lot. In I will say, you talk for the most part way more than I do.